this was about as subtle of a drama as you can find out there. And it is slow burn. Today, uh, we're covering The Dig. Um, hit you with the log line. You ready? Yes, let's do it. All right, this is a Netflix original. An archaeologist embarks on the historical important excavation of Sutton Hoo in 1938 in England. Um, and I actually got to visit um, that, that whole experience in the British Museum. I got to see all of the artifacts and all that when I was down there. No way. Yeah, I got to see it. So I got to, and they actually didn't show one of the huge artifacts, which was a helmet. Um, they got like a like wow. a like an old warrior helmet that they showed, and there's some shields and stuff, and you can see how they excavated it. So I got to see all these really cool um, things that I expected to see in the film. Yeah, not not what not what it. you got. Yeah, no, this yeah. didn't this didn't go where I expected it to go. Sure. Um, I thought we were going to do like a more of like a, there will be blood type of situation <laughs> in this film. Yeah, and uh, no. Not at all. This was <laughs> this was about as subtle of a drama as you can find out there, and it is slow burn. What do you think? Uh, I I would say slow burn. That's kind of a good way to put it. Um, I, I feel like the kind of the little seeds are planted there at the very beginning, so you know right. that that slow burn is kind of coming. And but yeah, <laughs> I, I think with this film you have to be in the right mood for it. Because yeah. it's it's just it takes its time. The acting is nuanced. I mean, Ray Fiennes, Carrie Mulligan are great. Oh uh, yeah. Even the, even the kid was really good. I mean, it's just the performances are solid and they're nuanced and they feel like real people. They don't feel like caricatures, which is yes. which is great. But you got to be ready to go into that. If you yes. if you just sit down and you're thinking, okay, I'm just gonna watch like a nice like a nice drama, you know, I mean, it's. You're just like, oh, okay, here we go. We're, we're taking a real life kind of situation here. Yeah. And it's about archaeology. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's, it's hard to enthrall people with that. And uh, archaeology in an area you would never like honestly think of because in general, we think of archaeology like dinosaurs or right. Egypt. Yeah. And here we are in, you know, Britain right before World War II talking about archaeologists it's it's crazy right and they were trying to keep the pace up you could tell through the impending war with germany so right. you know you keep seeing planes fly overhead and you keep hearing people talk about it but in general you know it, it's it's just this kind of subtle anxiety that yeah. is really downplayed because it's british culture sure. so they're not they're not weighing it wearing it on their shoulders um but it, but that was one way that they're trying to keep the pace, trying to keep your attention. Yeah. The yeah. other, the other way they did it was through was through music. It was through the sound. Oh God, this, I think that's what got me in the end, and I'll talk about that later. But the okay. soundtrack was, just, yeah, the music was great. Yeah, they great. were really, they were really keeping up the pace with it because you know yeah. you're watching the guy dig and you're like he's just he's just moving dirt, but then like the music is hitting you and the sound effects and then all of a sudden he's caved in. You're like, oh, this guy might not be breathing, you know. So yeah. so so that was successful. Um, but I could see as a writer getting this gig going. I don't even know how, how do you make this interesting, you know? <laughs> uh, right. I don't I mean, like it, it being based on a true story, I found really interesting. I mean, I kind of love when we're we're talking about, you know, um, based on or inspired by actual events kind of stuff. I, I, I agree with you. But here's the thing, like the based on the true story aspect, uh, Carrie Mulligan, Miss Pretty in yeah. real life was a spiritualist. And, and back then, spiritualists did seances. They did group okay. seances. They talked to the dead. They did all kinds of weird stuff. Um, and I'm like, I would have been thrown that in because that's fascinating. And and we're already dealing with the theme of death, right? Yeah, after what what afterlife is. Yeah. What does that mean? And right? and and a longing and yearning as well. So those are mm -hmm. the kind of the the tones and the themes we're going with. Um, so I would have I would have included that, but uh, but they chose to to omit it. I'm yeah, assuming that was very 
that, yeah, that was, I was cut. I didn't know her story. So hearing that, yeah. it's like, oh, there's a, di there's a difference there in that characterization. Oh, I, th I think it could have been a really cool thing and it definitely hmm. would have kept the pace going, but obviously they wanted to keep her as, um, I guess, empathetic as possible. And, and yeah, yeah. Uh, the down to earth, lonely widow. I mean, it really is kind of what they are going for. for yeah, for sure. But it was, uh, it was so, I, I liked it. You liked it? I so, did. I did. So obviously, my feeling is that um, they they were building Ray Fines as the central character, right? Basil yes. Brown, right? Basil Brown. Yes. Who is not an archaeologist. He's a quote excavator because he has no real education in archaeology. He doesn't have a degree, but he's a learned man through through. Well, he's an autodidact. I mean, uh, that's yeah. what I am, and I can I can respect and appreciate anybody like that. Right. Um. And 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 there was a lot of that then. I mean, mm -hmm. people that would really uh, teach themselves and become experts. So. Uh, you think he's a central character, but then you quickly realize, like, no, it's not. No. It's it's it, this is her story. Yeah, and and I realized that when I I put two and two together, where she just had this feeling. She said, "I have this feeling. This is the mound I want to dig up." Right. Yeah. So it's her already in her feeling, in her gut, and in her heart. Yes. And then she starts to get sick with uh, what I'm assuming was probably heart disease or, or something along those lines. I mean, it's certainly, um, they, they certainly build it as some kind of a heart disease. I yeah. mean, you know, they called it stomach acid. It, it could have been cancer. We, we don't know, but whatever it is, they didn't have the medicine to treat it, especially with the war coming up. So, you know, her, her heart was dying. Like her heart was literally, we're watching her character, but her heart's breaking and dying. And we're so, so we're kind of watching that. God, what a I mean, that, that's a beautiful observation. She's mm -hmm. heartbroken because she's a widow. She's lost her husband. She has she has hired this man to come and excavate their land because it's what she wanted to do with her husband. That's why they bought the land before he passed. So she's trying to keep his memory alive through this excavation as she's heartbroken and then physically yeah. is, has heart disease, which is, yeah, yeah that's an absolutely a, a beautiful observation. Um, and but it was were, her story. You're right. It was her story. It wasn't. Yeah. yeah, absolutely her story. And some of the tricks they were using to really try and keep your attention is, is uh, they, they hinted at a possible love triangle and then backed way far away from it um, to have like a story twist in there. Um, and, and I just looked at it. These are just mechanisms. We're just trying to keep people interested at this point. Sure. Yeah. Um, the other thing, uh, this is something that I always have an issue with because it can go south so fast, is to bring in characters that play a prominent role like mid-act two um, because they come in so late to the story, it's hard to really develop them. And this story is guilty of that. The story brings in a bunch of characters in act two and right. then you kind of have to get to know them. So a lot of screen time is shifted over to their subplots because we brought in these extra characters to keep the story going forward. Yeah, um, you're right. That's a good that's a good observation as well, for sure. I, I think they pulled it off. I mean, I think it works because by the end of the story, you know, the Peggy character when she realized, I mean, spoilers, guys, but you know the show. Yeah. Um, when you when you know the when you realize that her husband is um, is secretly gay and in the closet, right? Um, and then she's heartbroken because. Again, this is about yearning, right? This is about yearning mm -hmm. for lost love. Mm -hmm. uh, the man she married can't love her in the yeah, way that exactly. she wants to be loved. And so you're like, oh my God, what a powerful subplot. And she did get a lot more screen time in that mid-act too, but they pulled it off because I was definitely feeling for her oh, um, yeah, at the same yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. but I, but I love the moment. I love the moment when she has that realization and then the husband walks up and the exchange between them without saying a word said right. everything and it was so great and the actors were fantastic it just it just worked i love it that. was it was very visual um and then eventually you hear the line i could learn to love you and then your heart sinks you're like oh yeah. my god that's right, you can't you shouldn't yeah. have to do that nobody uh -huh. should have to suffer through that on either end of that of that of sure. that relationship yeah yeah um and then showing the the um her taking the ring off and then dropping it into the ground which then would become an artifact, right? An artifact, so, yeah, exactly. it works right back into mm -hmm. the story. So, I mean, visually, uh, they really put it together well. Um, now, with Mr. Basil Brown's character, he didn't have uh, much of a, of a grand arc, really. 
uh, he was there really as a foil for her to kind of bounce humanity off of, I would yeah. say, mm-hmm. um, because we don't really, and we don't really know. He has a wife, he has a mysterious wife and they just look entirely average together. You know, yeah. they, they don't look dispassionate, mm-hmm. um, but they don't look passionate. They just look content. Yeah. Um, in, but interestingly I, is his wife seems to be the one that is his, his, like she, she kind of she is wants his it. consciousness. So she yeah. sees things in him that he's not even admitting and, right. and whether or not they pulled that in or wrote that because we needed to see that character development for him. She's that. Yeah. Character, right. Yeah. I think you're right. I think she does mention that, um, that, uh, he's longing for the other woman and she says it almost in a, um, a passive way, but, but in a confident way where she didn't feel threatened, which I thought was amazing. Cause he asked her, would you like to stay the night? And she's like, no, like she knew mm-hmm. nothing's going mm-hmm. to happen, which is, uh, but I think she, I think she associated even that, that kind of love triangle thing as yeah. just him longing to be there. Like his true love was literally right. being there and digging the dirt. Digging, yeah. And so yeah. that woman represents that for him. For him. Right. Right. Fine, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, finding history and then presenting it in a way that it can uh, live on into the next generation, which was a, another theme, which brought on by Carrie Mulligan's character's uh, son, and um, he would he kind of mentored that that young boy in a yeah. way that that allowed that relationship to grow. Mm-hmm. So I mean, there's a lot of facets to this, and that's where the subtlety comes in. Um, my God, you've got to be paying attention though. Or you just miss it because yeah. they, they're not hitting you on the head with anything. That's for mm-hmm. sure. No, no. But I, I kind of, for me, I appreciated that. I did. did. I, I really felt like I was drawn in enough. Um, and maybe it was just the performances because I do feel like even though right. the story was not based around Basil Brown, right. um, he was captivating. Ray Fiennes is a fantastic oh, actor, yeah. Right? Yeah. right? So exactly. how do you not want to watch him? But I, I think they both did a great job of just drawing you in, even though yeah. it was just so so subtle and so slow, right? No, I agree. And I mean, I, I'm a fan of Ray Fine whenever he's in a movie where he has a nose. I think that's great. <laughs> so I think that's that's pretty awesome. Where he's awesome. not he who shall not be named. <laughs> yeah, that's that's all I'm saying. So I got, you know, you get 100% Ray Fines right there, not 92. So um, with with the visual of the of the story and i want to see how much of this you caught oh initially when we come into the film even when they're in open water you don't see it everything is very tightly framed and every everything is comes into the characters almost as if they're down a narrow corridor right right even when she's walking down a street or if they're in the trench or when she's going down to her husband's grave Mm -hmm. right all very trench like to me it was screaming world war one trench warfare trying to give that kind of claustrophobic imaging but also i'm thinking of just she feels boxed in she feels closed in and then as we further along the story you get more open field wider shots and i think that's her kind of coming to the grips of what's going on what's going on well and that's really interesting that you say that because you're right even the first half of the the dig per se um she's still in the house so they're out digging he has to come get her every time but then she just starts sitting out there and watching them and becoming part of it yeah and that shift happened and you're right that's a really great observation yeah the visual shifts and then it almost looks like a different film yeah but it's you know it's interesting that you say that too about the 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 kind of the cinematography in terms of the way that it was shot but it also i know that that area is pretty much surrounded by water it's like more land right yeah so there's there's and and the fact that it's a ship but it's in the middle of a dry field so you know there was this kind of like symbolism of um which was interesting because in the plane crashes in the yeah. water behind her house so it's like, that, yeah you know the war is happening in your backyard but what is in your yard what's going on there very you know? much yeah, I think it hits home. I think the plane crash, they had to put that in. That you know, because the 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 stakes with the war are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. You you right. see it one initially you see like one flyover, right? And it's just like one plane. Then you see like a squadron, and then you go, oh, okay, things and they're lower. And then you see the plane that's that's just falling to pieces as it hits the water and 
Uh, and then, you know, the, the ver- verbal up the stakes of don't go in the water. And he goes in the water, saves the kid, Exactly. Or, yeah. but, the, but the guy dies. So, yeah. uh, so, you know, there, there's the buildup of that. One thing I will say, a lot of the conflict in this film is verbal. I mean, it's a lot of. That's true. That's very true. I mean, um, so you were saying that we're not, we're not really seeing much more of that internal conflict or the, the I, I'm, it's aspect just, of. It, the, the conflict the internal conflict is it's just so subtle, man. Like you got to really be paying it. If you're like half watching this and you're on your phone, you're missing half the movie. Yeah. Yeah. You're not picking it up. So, but a lot of it is, is almost expositional in like, this is what I'm experiencing. This is what I've gone through. So there is some talking of my feelings, but a lot, there is also using the dig as subtext for what the characters are internally experiencing. And I love that stuff. Yeah, that was great. That you're, you have a good point. Although I do feel like when Becky's care or uh, um, Margaret's character is introduced, um, I don't know why I said Becky, sorry. Peggy. Um, Peggy, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, that is probably the only aspect of the film where you see that it, it's not as subtle. I think yeah. that it was, you could see it clearly from the start and you were following that the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Um, some chauvinistic, uh, toxic masculinity going on there as well. Uh, yeah. But oh yeah. So well acted. Um, Lily James killed it. Yeah. So, that's who so it was, good. right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. She's great. Um, yeah. And, 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 uh, her, uh, subplot about yearning for love and the idea of moments happen in a life Mm -hmm. and you could take advantage of it or not and she had not taken advantage of a moment and i love that because then you start i love the fact that they showed it they go oh she doesn't get the happy ending that's good it's good to to show that she had a moment she didn't step up to it and lost the moment because then you wonder what's going to happen and then you get another moment. And then you and, get another moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is I, fine for yeah. me. <laughs> I didn't it expect works. it. I was kind of frustrated. I was like, damn it, they got me. You know, I thought, <laughs> oh no, she gets the happy ending and the and the and the romantic scene with the guy, which is good. It was sweet. It was cute. It was fine. But you yeah. know he's going off to war and the whole fact that there was this element of like you cannot go die. You know he's going to go die. A lot of those guys right. went and never oh, came back from World War II. It was so, just it's, it's a tragedy. And, yeah. uh, and, and yeah, I mean the, the whole not so subtle suggestion is that he probably doesn't make it. Yeah. But, yes. but, but yeah. we don't know, you know, and that I don't even want to get into that because she dies after about nine years, um, finally from her heart condition and then mm-hmm. her son, who knows, I mean, who knows what happens. So um, she in real life actually lived a number of years after that, after they did that. Yeah. It took like nine years after the dig and then, um, and then she, uh, from what I understand, I could be wrong. I'm I'm not a historian. Uh, it was about nine years or so after the dig, okay. and then she and then she passed away. Oh wow! Yeah, and then the stuff with Basil Brown wasn't until not, recently. Not, yeah, not right? too long ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then yeah. So, but I did get to see that with the plaque and everything. You see all the all the all the oh, cool artifacts. Neat. Yeah, it's pretty neat, man. Yeah. Um. Yeah, like like the like the um coins and stuff like that is pretty cool yeah uh, yeah so uh so the dig overall you enjoyed it and and you were moved by it i i was i will be uh i will be transparent and not ashamed to say that i got a little teary cry at the end Aww. it got me it got it me got in the you. Feels. it nailed and I, you i think there was a number of aspects of it i think it was the fact that like he said i want to take my mom sailing so he knows he can't do that, but they sit in the boat and they look at the stars and it's Damn like, it. ah, God. That and was the, such a good scene. And the music playing at the same time, which yeah. the score again, like you said, lent to that. It was just, yeah. I'm watching them, you know, lay in the boat and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it was, <laughs> you're, you are absolutely right. It was an exceptionally powerful scene mm-hmm. and I, and I'm watching it. And, um, I didn't, I, I wasn't, um, emotionally moved by it as you were, but I appreciated what they were doing because yeah. it's beautiful. It's beautiful from that, from the little boy character who we know wants to take care of people, which is like, oh my God, oh it's, yeah, so hits sweet. me so deep. Mm-hmm. Um, and so then he, he, he gets his mom on the boat and then, 
uh, uh, Basil is there as well. And they have this, what a, a beautiful way to end a film. It really yeah. was. Yeah. 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 Well, actually them reburying it. So yeah. let, I mean, talk about the circle of life because th that was the whole aspect of like, you know, we're, what is our surface level look yeah. like? And then when we go to the ground, we, we're always going to go back to the ground. Right. Yep. Um, so the fact that they were reburying it was yeah. uh, I thought that was a really cool shot to end the film on and you I never agree. left the shot. So the credits no. rolled as they were still burying the ship. Yeah. They, awesome. they crane out. Yeah, no, it's yeah. really good. Yeah, it's awesome. And and as they're craning out, they're pulling up and they're just showing how big the place is. Yeah. And how yeah. little you really are. Man, mm -hmm. yeah. It, it it's 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 an artistic film. Mm -hmm. It really mm -hmm. is. Yeah. Yeah. But it did. I I mean, any for anybody who really like likes kind of that they they want that subtle aspect. They just want to sit and just soak in something and really think about it. Um, I thought it was great. I thought it was a great flick. It is, yeah. If you if if you're, if you're into if you're into that kind of an artistic approach, if you're if you really want to sit down and watch an intelligent drama with subtle performances, this is your movie. If you're yes. thinking you're yeah. sitting down and it's going to be kind Indiana of Indiana like... Jones, it's not. <laughs> we did no. We or if you think to... it's going to be over the top, like there will be blood, and you're going to see like huge performances, you're not going Daniel Day Lewis yeah. here. Yeah, I was just like, whoa, okay, this is. I need to stop thinking what the film is going to be like and just sit down and let it hit me. And let it do. Yeah. Cause every week we've said, let's pick this thing. And we yeah. sit down with this expectation. It's never yeah. what we think. It's good to have a theme. I think that is our theme of yeah. the show is, Hey, let's sit down for this. Oh, this is going left. <laughs> <laughs> this is not the direction I was thinking it was. Let, going. Me, let me sit down. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. All right. Well, all right. So uh, this is a good one. Uh, uh, and we will look for another one next week. Yeah, I mean, we, this is what we do. We sit yeah. and we talk and we give you flicks to go watch. <laughs> but I think we broke this one down pretty well because there's a lot going to it. It's very, very nuanced and, and it's easy mm -hmm. to miss stuff. Um, and you can really sit down, but watching the visual palette and seeing how they can take a slow burn film <laughs> and use things like music to really pick up the pace yes, yeah. um, is, is significant because how many indie films out there, how many films out there have you seen that are like this, but they can't pull it off. They can't pull it off. And yeah. also I feel like having the specific cast or the right actors, again, I'm going to throw it to Carrie Mulligan and, and Ray Fiennes because I don't feel like that would have even been as strong. Had right. those actors probably not been in those roles? No, I think you're. I think you're right. Actors can really bring so much to to a script, and their approach and the choices they make can mm -hmm. really absolutely elevate a project. And I think yeah. something like that, if you had a character that phoned it in with no nuance to the lines, yeah. yes, yeah, it's dead mm -hmm. in the water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Absolutely. All right. Well, this this uh, episode was brought to you by the Script Summit Screenplay Contest, where you can win a cash prize with a chance to have a contract with a Hollywood talent manager. Yay. All right, All right guys. Thanks a lot for joining us. And of course, Christy, thanks for being here. I'm always glad to be here. See you on the next one.